Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the program, Dollars and Cents. This is Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning. Talking, of course, this week on the program about the coronavirus, the effects on the market. Obviously, terrible week for the markets. We've talked a lot about the virus, the economic impact, how what we see playing out in terms of sort of that V-shaped pattern in the economy. Also, last segment of the program, we were simply reminding people of the economic cycle, right? Expansions are always followed by recessions. Recessions are always followed by expansions. That's the pattern. And ultimately, is coronavirus the thing that sort of drives it in? I mean, we hear all the, the, the media saying, oh, this expansion has been going on a long time and the market's been going up and it's been a long time since 2008, 2009, the last recession and so on and so on and so forth. And is this the event that serves as the tipping point? Frankly, maybe, who knows? The reality is though, that's normal. This is not anything to say, I'm out, I'm done, I'm gonna completely change my investment allocation because here's the reality. If you've been a client of our firm for the past 30 years and many of you have been, or if you've just simply been an investor that has been consistent over the course of the past 30 years, you've seen three recessions, 90, 91, 92, right? 2001, 2008, 2009, I mean, you've seen three recessions, but the rest of the time has been an expansionary period. If you look at your turn over that period of time, it's been pretty darn good. So like high single digits, low double digits, eh, that's pretty good. So at the end of the day, perhaps we all need to put a little perspective on this. Unfortunately, that's not what the mainstream media is all about. Uh, so we would urge you to do a couple of things with this news story. First of all, get your flu shot. Wash your hands, get your flu shot, right? Because the run-of-the-mill flu kills like 30,000 people a year in this country. So do that, number one. And number two, maybe not quite listen to the media quite as much over the course of the next few days, because certainly they are really driving the, the pattern. So when we talk about that, okay, uh, one of the things that we would also make some comments on is that not every recession looks like 2008. I think far too many people jump to the conclusion that whenever the next recession does occur, that, oh, it's gonna be like 2008, I'm gonna lose 50% of my money, uh, that's not something that I really wanna be involved in. And, and here's, the, here's the reality. If you look back at this recession expansion, recession expansion and period of time, not all recessions are the same, not all expansions are the same, well, that makes sense. And some recessions are mild and some recessions are deep. 2008, 2009, I think we can safely say that was a pretty deep one, which also typically means that the next one is not that deep because the washout in 08, 09 in the economic system was much, much greater. And so consequently, that means it's just less to sort of wash out, if you will. By that, I mean, you don't see the kind of asset bubbles that you saw back in that time period, think real estate. You also don't see the ease of lending standards um, like you did back in those days as well. Certainly, it's a little bit easier to borrow money and certainly home values have appreciated some, but as you recall, the radio show that we did with Dr. Sean Snaith uh, of the Institute of Economic Forecasting out at UCF, we did that show with him about a month ago now. We talked about sort of the relativity of where those numbers are, and we are a long ways below where that acceleration happened in terms of housing and pricing and lending. So a little perspective, as we like to say, goes a long ways. And so certainly uh, this these times are good for that. So uh, when you think of that and, and you think of, you know, the, the absence of any real asset bubble per se, particularly in terms of historical standards, and you think about the, the, the relatively tighter lending standards, and then you look at low interest rates, low unemployment, and from an economic perspective, when you do go into that period of contraction, you're going into it in a much better economic shape, a much truer economic shape, a lot of cash sitting out there. And so consequently, then those types of 
periods of contractions don't really or aren't really as as deep or as dramatic as other types of recessions that you can get like a 2008, 2009. So just some perspective as well on what we see just generally in the economy and the economic conditions. Not all recessions are like 2008. Many of them are uh, mild in nature. And we suspect that the next one, when it happens, not if, when it happens, and is coronavirus the thing that makes it happen, who knows? The reality is, though, that we suspect that that next one will be somewhat mild, particularly in comparison to what you saw in 2008. Stay tuned for all of that, right? We'll still be here doing the program through the next recession, the next expansion, the next recession, the next expansion. The ne well, at some point, I'll be old. But anyway, you get the idea. So the reality is, though, from an investing perspective, what do you want to do? You want to do the same thing that you always do, which is be diversified and be consistent. Now, by diversification, we mean make sure that you are well balanced. Make sure that there is a good balance. And this is a theme we've been talking about on this program for a couple of years now. Make sure that there's a good balance between growth and value because Growth has really been what's driving the market an awful lot over the course of the past couple of years, but dividends or value paying types of companies generally hang up better in tougher, tougher economic periods of time. And because they pay that dividend, you wind up getting at least some baseline level of return on a regular basis. So when we talk about being diversified, make sure it's not, oh, I got a bunch of stocks, okay. It's not enough. You got to drill down a little bit more into that and look at the actual mix of the types of companies that you have. The reality is that large companies have a tendency to have less volatility than smaller companies. So check that. That's number one. How much large do I have? How, how, companies do I have? And how many? How much in small companies do I have? You want to reduce the risk of and volatility of your portfolio. Make sure you've got predominantly large companies in there. That's number one. Number two. Make sure that you've got that mix between growth versus value. You should be able to look at your portfolio and see exactly what that mix is, exactly what the categorization, categorization is between growth versus value, and look at those numbers and look at those percentages and make sure that those numbers are somewhat even across the board. You don't want 50% in large growth and 10% in large value or large dividend paying. That would be a portfolio that isn't that has lost its diversification. So make sure you check that out. And then, of course, most importantly, remember, okay, we're all in this for the rest of our lives. We're not all spending the money all in one day, or you shouldn't be. And so consequently, remember to position those assets, not just for today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, but for the rest of your life. And I think if you have that perspective, it'll help you get through tough periods of time like we just saw this past week in the market. So we're going to take a break. And then when we come back from the break, we'll reset. We'll talk a little taxes because, hey, it's that time of year and uh, give you some perspective on the winners and the losers from the tax cut that happened a couple of years ago. Got some data out on that now. And it's starting to be a little bit clearer as to which side of the table people were on. So we'll cover all of that. We'll try and get all of that in that last segment here on the program on dollars and cents. This is Joel Garris of Nelson Financial Planning, News Radio, WFLA, Orlando. <music> 